I think it's time that I had my own, uh, jingle for Luke's top tips. Hang on, hang on. Top tips. Top tips. Top tips. Let's change the musical instrument. Well, ah, the whirly. Top tips. Sinister. I see a Frenchman. Anyway, it's enough of that to tomfoolery. Eh? Let's get to the crux of the matter. Can't hear it now. Uh, this is going to be the first of my top tips video. They were going to be tachographs first one, but I realised that uh, the English Channel would be quite a good place to start. I know it's quite hard to get a start on European work these days, but uh, this will be a nice, quick, easy, short one because I shipped over with the train, swap trailers in Calais, and I'm now I'm shipping back with the boat, so it was easy to uh, film and quick. And uh, there's the sort of things that sometimes daunt people, especially getting on the train, and the train terminals can be a bit confusing to start with. So yeah, and uh, I think it's going to be a bit where I put the Euro vinaigrette in there. You go into the place and you ask for a vinaigrette and they'll give you a salad dressing. Uh, yeah, so that, uh, hopefully, it'll be a fairly short video. And it'll be the first of many of Luke's top tips. Many. You're never going to get away from my stupid face. Stroke the beard. Stroke the beard. The greying beard. Hello. Hello, how are you? Mrs. Jones, are you well? So yeah, Luke's top tips. Uh, and let's start off as well by saying uh, I'm not teaching my granny to suck eggs. I don't want anybody to think I have this high opinion of myself and I think I'm the best driver in the world. I'm nothing of the sort. Uh, as the lorry at the ditch will attest, all it is is uh, I like being an idiot in front of a camera, so I can just point out things that everybody knows that have been doing it for a while. So, for instance, the train or ferry terminals and stuff is easy once you know it, and anybody could show you this who uh, regularly does these things. So, uh, I know experienced drivers may watch these, but they're sort of aimed at the newer and younger drivers who are just starting out, and to make life a little bit easier. Okay, so, on we go with the advice and tips. Right, here we are then, just coming up to the train. I'm gonna show you how to book on. I think I've done this in other videos, but it, these are a dedicated series of videos. Turn one's headlights off, because it helps the uh, uh, camera read. Pick one with the arrow pointing right. wait for the man in front to dither about. So this is what you're presented with. To check in. I like these, I think they're really good. The cameras, if you turn your headlights off. If you don't, sometimes you have to put the number plate in yourself. And it's as easy as that. You take the ticket. If, for any reason, your booking won't go through, press that button and they'll give you a ticket and you go... I'll show you now. You see the office there, freight information. So if you've got a problem with the booking, you'll get a ticket, take your ticket over there and they will help you sort it out. You can also buy uh, your Benelux tax in there, the vignette. And they take all the cards as well. So, on to the train. Uh, X-ray machine. We may as well, but normally it's two at a time. It's not too bad. No, we've been lucky. Straight through. 
and then into the lanes. You stop here at this man who's leaning out to check your booking and put you in a lane. It's quite busy, surprisingly, for a Saturday. So A, you see all the arrows up there? Just follow the arrow, the green arrow. A is for the other end of the train. Another set of lanes, same thing in uh, Calais. Hopefully shouldn't wait too long. The man on the other side's waiting for the trailer. It's one of those things, places, places, places like this. And look, I'm being all serious for ages now. Places like this can be a bit daunting, of course. First time I was daunted and uh, getting on the train is certainly a daunting task. First time you do it. But again, once you just uh, do it a couple of times, you'll be fine. You know, it's like everything. So going by that, we'll be on the second train. Right. Make myself a cup of coffee, I think. Oh, and when you go out the top there, don't turn too quickly, otherwise we'll take it back end out from the concrete posts. Is this one got... Oh, no. Yeah, it has. Oh, yeah, and the other thing is, when you stop at the end, if you're right up the top, just sit back a bit from the barriers, because otherwise they've made it so narrow, the, uh truck next to you, if it goes before you, if this both lanes are full up, can't get out. Well designed. Probably designed by the bloody French. Right, so basically I think I've just suddenly decided to do like an English Channel top tips because it's enough on its own. I'll do Calais as well. You'll stop here while you'll slow down. This man will check that your fuel caps are on. Someone who stops, some don't. Basically, you see the back of the open platform and the corner closest to us. You want to go in really shallow like this and get the back wheels of the trailer as close to possible as there. In that way, you won't even have to go off the platform on the other side. Actually, he's done a very good job of that, of what I was trying to tell you. You see that there? You sort of go in smoothly. And believe me, I've made mistakes. The first time uh, I got on the train, was uh, when I first went to work for HSF. I'd been driving a left-hand drive for a week. I got on the train and took the diesel tanks off. <laughs> it wasn't one of my better mornings, it was 5 a.m. as well. And HSF being HSF, we, uh, I'd been working for like uh, 24 hours. The other thing to remember on the train is uh, you go and get on a little bus and the bus will stop at a door on the train. So each bus stops at a different door, generally. And you get, you come, make sure you come out the same door. So the front of the train for the, front door for the front of the train, and the back door for the back of the train. And don't stop too, too far forward. And if there's a van in front of you, don't follow him too close, because I've seen people have to reverse back. So we go and get the little bus now. Little bus! Fridge. You see how low these are, my skirts, side skirts are lower than this train. And then walk out and wait for the bus. I can hear the bus, here comes the bus. Front of train, front door. So there we go, hopefully you saw from my little bit of filming there that there was only one door working. So you get in the relevant bus, back or front. We're in the front, so we got in the bus closest to the front of the train, remember that. It's nice and easy, just round to all the trucks now, swap trailers, back on the boat. Up to land. Uh, 
what else, what else, what else, what else? Yeah, I remember to turn your fridge on. Don't let anybody rush you on these bits. Slow and steady. Oh, that's about it, really. The uh, other way is pretty much the same. Slightly different layout, of course. If you have a problem with your tickets, getting a ticket, uh, you press the button again and the office is on the left. So as you come through the barrier, swing left, you'll see the office there and you've got a barrier there as well and they'll let you in. And they'll check your passport there as well. Not in the office, further on, past the scanner. So there we go. Swap trailers and then into Calais for the... Well, I'm in Calais for the uh, boat. It's all very serious, isn't it, Navy? Very serious. A bit of tomfoolery. You alright, Bertie? No. It was dark in there. I'm scared of the tunnel, you know that. You've taken me into the carriage. But Bertie, you haven't got a passport. You've sort of got a secretly uh, sneak. I don't care. Right. Onward! Dunes. If you've got any sense, you won't park anywhere near this place. I never have, and I never will. Although the immigrant problem's a bit less nowadays. There's the pride of the tro po Trollish, the Polish transport fleet. What three magnificent beasts! There's some real old sheds down here. Normally, the trucks you see parked down here are the crappiest. <laughs> he says in a very judgmental way. Don't be so judgmental, Luke. It's not good for you. And now I'm referring to myself in the third person. Jesus, it's all going horribly wrong. My mind is spiralling out of control. New Mercedes, new Mercedes. So anyway, Calais, as we're coming into now, basically has five different stages. You've got the first one, the heartbeat monitor, uh, which you may or may not go through. Mostly hard siders go through there, but sometimes they pull turn siders. Uh, then you have check-in, which is uh, self-explanatory. Then you have British passport control, again, self-explanatory then they may pull you into a shed uh, just past passport control uh, or they may not often they seem to pick on fridges there as well if you're a fridge you can expect to go through every stage uh, and then perfect past the sheds you've got sometimes the French customs are out and they may have you look at your paperwork and look at the back for whatever reason I don't know but they just seem to like sticking their nose in and uh, then to the lanes about it really. It's fairly simple. Can't really go wrong. It's all fairly good, well signposted. Look at that sun. Lovely uh, day all of a sudden. There's a heartbeat monitor shed you can see over down there on the left. These are the heartbeat sheds text heartbeat. There's the man in the yellow jacket that will direct you as to whether to go into them or not. If not, you go around them. These bits are fairly irrelevant. They may sell. There was another stage, sorry. There's a, but this is very rarely. They stop you here. Very occasionally they will. Generally you can just drive through. It's okay, I'm British. So all the curtain siders will not go in the heartbeat, and I will. Most of those curtain siders manage to get into the UK without being checked once, whereas fridges do all the time. Watch, there we go, she's turning right. Yes. Yes, of course. No, it's empty. Jolly good! In we go, into the shed, the shed of doom! Ah! There, over to check-in. Check-in of doom! Unpredictable uh, people. Ba -do -ba -do. So basically, you give them your passport. Sometimes they ask for the paperwork, but generally they just want them to know what's in it and the weight. I'm British. Don't mess with me. Get the Queen on to you. Bonjour. 
The sun is really bright. Right, we're on the uh, 1755, which is 4.55 in British time, which is in uh, 50 minutes. Put this in your windscreen. God, that's bright, isn't it? Hang on, I'm going to pull the behind it. Oh, there we go. That in your windscreen. And you give the numbered one to the men. Just going to check passports now. The cattle wagon up there, he seems to have been there for ages. Maybe he's the bottom of the passport. Maybe he's about to be arrested. Maybe he's an international criminal. Who knows? Who knows indeed? Those cattle lorries, all driven by criminals. That's very much a joke. Don't take me seriously! So there you go, UK Border Control. Hand them your passport. May pull you into the shed. May not. Who knows? It's like a big lucky dip. Or lucky dip is if you'd wish. Right, they're the UK sheds. If you uh, have hazardous on, you tell them at uh, the main check-in, but they'll give you a little ticket to come down here. You park up over there and the office is over there. Okay, they sometimes pull you into these sheds. Thankfully, they don't. And uh, this is some, where the French occasionally do pull you. But they're not out today. So, to be fair, they're not out that often. That looks like one of the new ships again. Which I probably missed yet again. That's the spirit of Britain. Spirit of Britain! God damn it, I'm probably on that old tug over there, look. God's sake. Is it coming in? It is too. Damn it! Right, you right, Bertie? No. Another bloody crossing. What's going on? I can see a reflection in the in the window. I don't give a shit, bastard. So Bertie, stop swearing. Children watch this. I'll have to beep it out. Hello, car people. So that's pretty much it, to be honest. All the lane numbers are perfectly marked. People crawl along and say, oh, where is my lane? Well, it's fairly bloody obvious where your lane is. It's above, it's with the number above it. Dover, the other side, I did a little bit of Dover uh, when we get off, but it's fairly easy. It's a lot easier actually, because you've just got the way bridges and then you go to check in and then the lane. And again, it's the same thing if you've got hazardous on, you just uh, get a ticket and you go to the office. Another thing you have to remember is if you've got hazardous, uh, with p at least, I don't know whether the others are the same, uh, you, uh, have to, uh, if you haven't got them from your customer or your consignor, you have to pay for hazardous stickers. A set of hazardous stickers uh, usually comes to about £10. So that's about it, really. And if you've got a running fridge, you tell them at the, uh, you ask for a plug in at the check in. Lane 200. So there we go. How to cross the English Channel. I've got an air leak as well. I have to change an airline. God damn it. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It's okay, they're off now, they're off. Thank you. Right, so here we are in Calais. I appear to have limited power. I've got a feeling we need to make a visit to a Scania dealer on Monday. For assistance. Basically, Dover is just a very, a much easier version of Calais. Come on! You can do this. You just pull in, you'll see the way bridges. Get your ticket, go to check-in. Sorted, basically. Easy peasy. Nothing to worry about. And when you're leaving, just go steady over the... That's the other thing. It's got a couple of sheds and stuff. I've only ever been pulled twice. Once for the scanner, once for Vosa. Ah, uh, it's easy enough. They knew who they want anyway. You can't stop it. They know who they want before you get on the boat. Because you see them looking for the registration plates and companies. So I'm going to London now for my 24. Hopefully the old beast will get there with her engine problem. Don't know what that could be. Excessive smoke apparently. I hope you found this film informative. 
and useful. Slight disclaimer, if you go wrong because you followed my things, you haven't followed them properly and you're an idiot. Goodbye.